The first thing that I always do with new tech is tear it apart and try to make it better. I have a problem. Laptops, graphics cards, playstations, whatever I can get my hands on, I always try to take it apart and just make it faster, cooler, whatever. So when I found out how user serviceable the new Steam Deck would be, my screwdriver started itching. And finally, after almost a year, I got my hands on it. Which meant I could answer a question that had been gnawing at me since it launched. Can I now invade people in the bathtub? Well, the answer to that is yes, but my other question, can I improve thermals with better thermal interface material? For years, companies had used less than ideal thermal paste material between heat generating components and their heat sinks that dissipate the heat. This was such a problem that companies like Thermal Grizzly sprung up to try and provide a better quality thermal compound to end users like with their Thermal Grizzly Conductinot that I covered previously. This time, however, I'm going to see if the famous Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, arguably the best thermal paste around, can improve on what Valve included in the Steam Deck. So let's start with our baseline. Here I have Elden Ring running at max settings and the GPU locked at 1600 MHz. As you can see, the CPU and GPU are at about 84 to 85C and 81 to 82C respectively. The fan is also running at about 5700 RPM. I'm not going to go into exactly how to tear down the Steam Deck, there's plenty of other videos on how to do that, but it's fairly easy, just remove 8 screws from the back and use a guitar pick to separate the two parts from the plastic shell. However, when you do this, make sure you do not have a micro SD card installed on the Steam Deck. If you take off the plastic shell with it installed, you will snap the SD card in half, as some people have found out the hard way. That said, once the bottom panel is off, getting to the Steam Deck's SOC just involves five more screws to expose the die. I will clean off the existing thermal paste, and while I'm here, change out the stock 64GB eMMC SSD that came with it for a much roomier 256GB SSD. I replaced the stock thermal paste with some Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, making sure to get enough on it so that no part of the die will be left bare, and then just do everything in reverse to reassemble the deck. Now let's see our results, and it's worse. The CPU and GPU temps are at about 85 to 86 C and 82 to 83 C respectively with the same fan speed. This is within what I would call margin of error, but in my opinion, it is definitely enough for me to conclude that replacing the thermal paste on the Steam Deck is completely unnecessary. Kudos to Valve here for not cheaping out with a lesser quality thermal paste. It would have been really easy for them to do that considering meeting the price point of the deck was not a simple thing, and I am sure they are not actually making money on selling this hardware. So that's it. Don't replace your Steam Deck's thermal paste. It's not worth it as Valve includes quality material already. That said, there is one thermal interface material that might give you better results, but honestly, I cannot recommend using Conductinot on the Steam Deck. As a mobile device that's carried around frequently, the odds are far greater that the liquid metal will leak out and get on other components, resulting in a dead Steam Deck. And considering that if you place an order now, you likely will not get another Steam Deck until sometime in 2023, you will be both out of money and a console for quite a long time. 